So now if I'm allowed to make the assumption that the neutrino goes here and the antineutrino goes here, then we'll notice that SU packaged all of the isospin up type states together and SD packaged all of the isospin down type states together. So we don't have SU2 yet, but it seems that the model knows something about SU2. In particular, if, I'm, if I were to define the object omega to be equal to alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, and omega dagger to just be its Hermitian conjugate, And let's say I were to now take this omega and I right multiply it onto the basis vector that corresponds to the neutrino. Then I would find that this object here happens to give me the basis vector for the electron. And this works for every isospin pair. So for example, if I were to right multiply this basis vector by omega for the anti-down quark, I would find that this gives me the basis vector for the anti-up quark. And similarly, if I were to get, if I were to take omega dagger and I right multiply objects on this side, so for example, the electron, if I were to right multiply this by omega dagger, it would take me back to the basis vector of the neutrino. Um, so finally, I'll mention that uh, when we apply the electric charge operator to these omega and omega dagger, here's what we get. So in other words, omega is negatively charged and omega dagger is positively charged. So we don't have SU2 in this model yet, but you can see that the, w, that the omega and omega dagger seem to have rudimentary behavior of W bosons.